Please stand for the sermon text that's taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 9, verses 35 to chapter 35 to chapter 10, verse 8. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Jesus called his twelve disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon and the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. The word of God for the people of God. God. You may be seated. <clears throat> Sent with a purpose. As followers of Christ, we are all sent with a purpose by Jesus to share the good news, serve others, and per- participate in God's mission, remembering that all things are possible by him when he's by our side. We are his ambassadors sent by his authority to the very ends of the earth. I'm excited this morning to dig into this word, God's word. We've got to dig into God's word today, and we're going to see a powerful passage from the gospel. Where Jesus reminds us that we all are sent with a purpose. This message hits home for those of us who've ever wondered, what is my purpose now that I'm a Christian? What is my purpose? Or maybe you've asked something like this, okay, now that I'm saved and I'm a Christian, what am I supposed to do? What's that mean? Thankfully, there's a lot of instructions and teachings from Jesus on this very topic. From the Sermon on the Mount to the Great Commission, Jesus a lot to say about how we are supposed to live once our lives have been redeemed. And it's not just how we are to live, but who we are to live for. You just heard me read Matthew chapter 9, verse 35 to chapter 10, verse 8. And as I mentioned,
this time the same as it is today. There's a lot of darkness out in the world. But Jesus was there to offer hope and healing to those who were lost and broken. Jesus' purpose was not only to save humanity from sin and death, but also to demonstrate the heart of the Father and to show us what it means to live a life of purpose and significance. Jesus carried out his mission. He was moved with compassion for the people. He encountered, as mentioned, they were without a shepherd. This is powerful image and speaks to the deep need for the existence without every human heart. Every human heart needs guidance. Every human heart needs protection. Every human heart needs care. Jesus recognized the people he encountered were not only physically sick and in need of healing, but also spiritually lost and in desperate need of a savior. In response to this great need, Jesus issued a call to his disciples in verse 37, saying the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. This call to action is not only directed to the 12 disciples, but it's also to each one of us who claims to follow Jesus Christ. We are all called to be workers in the harvest field, to be agents of God's love and grace in a world that is starving for truth and hope. Our purpose, like that of Jesus, is to bring the good news of the kingdom to those who are lost and to offer healing and restoration to those who are broken. In Matthew 10, we read that Jesus called his 12 disciples to him, and he gave them authority to drive out impure spirits, to heal every disease, and sickness. This, is, this authority is not given to the disciples because of their own merit or abilities, but because of their relationship with Jesus and their willingness to follow him and carry out his mission. The same is true for us today. As followers of Christ, we have been given authority to bring healing and restoration to a broken world, not because of our own strength, not because of our own wisdom, but because of our connection to Jesus, the source of all power and authority. We have authority in Christ because he has all authority to give. We can be sent in confidence because of who Christ is, what he accomplished, and how he's proclaimed to build his church. How did I come about being a messenger for Jesus Christ? How did you come about being a messenger for Jesus? Have you ever given your word, the word of Jesus, to somebody who was needing it? We've all encountered people who've been lost. We've all encountered people who needed help. Were we willing to give that help? Were we willing and able in this dark world to put ourselves out there as a believer in Jesus Christ and proclaim the good news? Are we willing to do that today? in a world so full of darkness. What does it take? Well, let me tell you, the first time I heard the call to help 
become a servant of God. I took and did a big U-turn and ran the other way. I said, no way, not me. That's too big a job for me. I'm not going to do that. Sound familiar for anybody? You tend to run the other direction. And how I started out was a Christ servant. So we, I know we have some Christ servants in this church. What's keeping you from renewing and continuing on what God has called you to do? There's training coming up in the beginning of August. It's not too late to sign up. We need to have more help than just the pastor. Christ's servants can do so much. What about Bible studies? Lead a Bible study. Lead a prayer group. Such important work to be done so that we can go out we need to equip ourselves to be able to go out into the world and save souls and bring souls to Jesus. I think you can see and take notice that there are some empty seats here this morning. So if we go out into the community and we spread the word, we can fill these seats. They who walks through those doors may not look like us because they're not like us. They may be lost and wanting to get to know what this Jesus fellow is all about. They may not talk like us, but that doesn't matter. They walk through those doors. The Holy Spirit Spirit's going to give us what it takes to communicate with them and let the Lord come to them. That leads to our next point. The harvest is plentiful. As a reminder, the vast opportunities and responsibilities that we as followers of Christ have in sharing the gospel and serving others. people in the world who are in desperate need of hope, love, and salvation that can only come from Jesus Christ. The harvest refers to the multitude of individuals who are spiritually lost and in need of a relationship with God as believers. We are called to be the workers who go out into the world sharing the good news of Jesus and inviting others to experience the life-transforming power and love of gra and grace. Wouldn't it be great if we can partner next year with another church to do a vacation Bible school? How many young lives can we touch How many young lives will realize it was Evansburg United Methodist Church that put and planted that seed in them? It's not about what church they go to. It's not about where they are led to do their service. It's about reaching them and planting that seed for Jesus. And if we're very active in bringing people in, in giving them that word, 
I guarantee you Jesus will make sure people will come into the church. All we have to do is open our hearts, open our mouths, and say the good news to those who are lost. How many people have you heard recently say to you, what is going on in this world? What are we supposed to do? People have gotten away from church. People need to come back to Jesus. And those few who are left you are committed to Jesus, or you wouldn't be here. We need to go forth and spread that word. Are you willing to do that? We have to recognize that the work of the kingdom of God is vast and varied. There are countless ways in which we can serve God and serve others, both within our local communities and around the world. Whether it's through evangelism, discipleship, acts of service, or simply living out our faith in our daily lives, there is no shortage of opportunities for us to participate in God's work and make a difference in the lives of others. Never forget this church. We are not alone in this mission. Jesus has promised to be with us every step of the way, empowering us through the Holy Spirit to accomplish his purpose and overcome any obstacles that we may face. As we step out in faith and obedience, we can trust that God will provide everything we need to be effective and fruitful workers in the harvest field. The renowned Christian theologian and pastor John Stott once said, the highest of missionary motives is neither obedience to the Great Commission, important as that is, nor love to sinners who are alienated and perishing, strong as its incentive is, especially when we contemplate the wrath of God, but rather zeal, burning and passionate zeal for the glory of Jesus Christ. John Scott Stott, the message of Romans, God's good news for the world. That quote serves as a powerful reminder that our motivation for participating in harvest should be rooted in our love for Jesus and our desire to see his name glorified in the lives of those we serve. All things are indeed possible with Jesus on by our side. We will surrender our lives to Christ and allow him to work through us. There is no limit to what he can accomplish in and through our lives. The disciples were ordinary people just like you and me. Yet Jesus chose them to be his representatives on earth. He empowered them to do extraordinary things in his name. This is a powerful reminder that God does not call the qualified. He qualifies the call. No matter what your background, no matter what your past mistakes were, or our perceived inadequacies, Jesus can use all of us for his glory if we're willing to submit to his will and trust his will. As we look to the miracles the disciples were able to perform, we must remember that it's not their own strength. And it wasn't their ability that they were able to do these things. It was only through the power and authority of Jesus that they were able to heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those with leprosy, and drive out demons. This is a critical lesson for us. We have to remember as we seek to serve God, 
to make a difference in the world around us. We must rely on Jesus, his power, not our own power. We may sometimes feel overwhelmed and challenge the obstacles we face. We may doubt our abilities. However, with Jesus, all things are possible. We must not limit ourselves to what we think we can do on our own, but instead trust the limitless power of Jesus to work through us. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 to 21 reads, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. We can be confident that he will equip us with everything we need to accomplish his will. We may face trials and difficulties along the way, but we can rest assured that Jesus is with us every step of the journey, empowering us to do the impossible in his name. So let us boldly embrace the calling God has placed on our lives, trusting that with Jesus by our side, all things are truly possible. Jesus has called each and every one of us to be workers in his harvest field. We are all set with the purpose. We have all been given authority and power to do incredible things in his name. Let's not limit ourselves to what we think we can do, but instead let's trust Jesus and step out in faith, knowing that he will work through us to accomplish the impossible. Jesus provides clear instructions to the 12 disciples about where they are to go and what they are to do. They are to go to the lost sheep of Israel, proclaim the message that the kingdom of heaven has come near. They are also to heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, and drive out demons. These instructions reveal the heart of Jesus' mission to bring hope, to bring healing, to bring restoration to those who are lost and broken. As followers of Christ, we too have been given that mission to carry out in the world today. The heart of our purpose remains the same, to bring good news to the kingdom of those who are lost and to offer healing and restoration to those who are broken. This mission may take many forms, sharing the gospel with a neighbor or co-workers or serving in a local ministry or traveling to another country on a mission trip. Regardless of where you are called to serve, our purpose remains the same, to be agents of God's love and grace in a world that desperately needs it. And remember, we are not called to carry out this mission on our own strength or wisdom. Instead, we have to rely on the power and guidance of the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us as a helper and guide. Jesus promises his disciples that the Holy Spirit will teach them all things and remind them of everything he has said to them. The same is true for us today. As we seek to live out our purpose as followers of Christ, we can trust that the Holy Spirit will empower and equip us for the work that lies ahead. So let's go boldly this week into the abundant harvest. It's not just how we are to live, but who we are to live it for. Amen. <laughs>